Hi everybody, my name is Amelia Bringus, and today I will be presenting on Matthew Swartz. And he is a photographer that I really like and that I discovered using this project, which I think is really cool, and he's become one of my favorite photographers now. So here is some of his work that I found after searching up his name. And these are actually the first pieces that really stuck out to me. And I really like his use of texture and the shapes and the colors used in his photography. I like how they're layered really well and they just blend seamlessly into one photo. So here's some more of his images and again, I love his use of color. I'll probably mention this like a thousand more times in this presentation, but I really do. The one on the left, which is pink, I really like how it focuses on the girl in the photo by having it shaded darker and kind of like rays of sunshine going out because it's lighter at the edges. And the one in the right, I really like the kind of like the pixelated effect. It really reminds me of um, a video game, kind of like Minecraft. And just, I love the bold colors because some of his work is very monochromatic, but he really does well with color and knows how to blend it. It really goes well with his style. And speaking of style, his style, I personally think is fine art. And he's very digitized. Actually, I found out some new techniques that I've literally never heard of before. I, um, I knew this artist. So basically, he uses a broken printer to get some of the shapes and patterns onto his photographs. He really uses like mixed media and different things. He layers different photographs on top of each other, makes some photographs. Some of them, they seem almost transparent. The subjects in the photo seem transparent. And he also uses Photoshop for these effects. And as I already mentioned, his work really uses color well. I just love how he finds a way to put different colors that sometimes I don't even think I could blend together, but he just makes them work very seamlessly, as I said or mentioned before. Basically, he grew up in Mountainside, New Jersey, and he's currently living in Massachusetts. This is his home right now. So I really couldn't find a link to his childhood. He hasn't he doesn't really mention his childhood as one of his influences to his art and his upbringing. He mainly talks about philosophy and his ex-girlfriend as one of his influences. So I apologize for not being able to find a link between his childhood and his work now because I literally found the information off of Facebook. <laughs> so his influences, um, as I mentioned earlier, was his ex-girlfriend and philosophy. And this was these influences were taken out of his two projects that I mainly focus on in this video, which are The Alternatives and Beth. And Beth is basically, well, his ex-girlfriend, and I'll show you how it influences him in the next slide. But philosophy influenced him in The Alternatives Project and... The concepts of consciousness really was his focus. So here is some photos from Beth and I also showed some of the photos before in the presentation and Beth was his ex-girlfriend and basically in this project he mentions well, he alludes to some of the feelings of missing her and moving on 
into his new relationship. And he uses some old photos for this project that were previously taken, but he also uses photos that he took specifically for this project. And, and in one of the images, he actually layered um, Beth and his new girlfriend, which I found kind of weird, but cool at the same time. And as I mentioned before, philosophy was an influence in the Alternatives Project. So basically, he came into contact with philosophy from the University of Princeton in 1992 when he got a degree. And in 1994, he went to a pre-med program, which I think was pretty cool because he's very like well-rounded um, in addition to his college and art, college of art, my apologies, and design and photography degree in Massachusetts College. So here's the alternatives and philosophy really worked its way into this project because his main focus was consciousness and this is basically as I see it and how I interpret it. Um, the one on the right is very blurry well, far right is very blurry, and I feel like that represents just kind of going in and out of consciousness and just being lost in, you know, your own world and sometimes not realizing what's around you. And in the middle one, I feel like this really represents to me is kind of like stress or feeling of panic, just looking from side to side. And I could just imagine the model's face moving. And in the first photo on the very left, I love this photo. I'm going to say that a lot because it really reminds me of the beach because of the the kind of rocks or boulders. It just reminds me of the sand and my family, which I really miss them a lot. And I love how he made the model in this image um, kind of see-through. So it really blent in with the background. It reminds me of like CGI, artificial intelligence, just gives me kind of like that techie vibe. And, um, here are more of his images from Beth and the Alternatives. And I kind of, I, well, I apologize because some of the images are a bit blurry because he makes them in these huge format sized images. So I have to like size them down and sometimes they get a little blurry. So my bad. But he has so many exhibitions and so many places has shown his artwork, which includes the George Eastman Museum, the Copenhagen Gallery, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, the iPad Photography Show, and the Unseen Festival, and many more. And here are my citations. And I will link Matthew Swartz, his website down below. But just a little warning, I find the website a bit confusing. So just a little warning before you hop onto the website. But I really recommend you look at it. And it just it's really an experience. It's very unique. As, as well as his works. So thank you very much for listening to me. Sorry this is so long. Thank you.